Well, we are only two days away from the NBA season resuming when the Lakers take on the Clippers Thursday night, and LeBron should be feeling refreshed. LeBron, along with Anthony Davis, Cal Kuzma, and Dwight Howard, all set out LA's final scrimmage against the Wizards yesterday. The Lakers did come away with a 123 to 116 win. So, Shannon, surprised that LeBron didn't play yesterday? I am a little surprised, Skip, because I thought I thought he would get like at least a quarter. Uh, to get this last little bit of conditioning out of the way. But I guess that's something that you really don't worry about with LeBron is conditioning, knowing that he was staying on top of his game during quarantine. Uh, he played about 14 minutes in the first, 14, 15 minutes in the first game. I think he played about 25 and a half in the second game. So he got a little bit over 40 minutes of actual run time in these, uh, two, in these two scrimmages. I'm not surprised with AD Skip, considering he got scratched in the eye the other day. So you've got to figure that he wasn't going to play. There's probably a chance he's going to wear, he's going to wear some kind of protective eye cover in the first game against uh, uh, the Clippers. I was surprised that Kuzma didn't play. Considering, Skip, when I look at it, I know what I, for the most part, I know, I, know, I know exactly what I'm going to get from LeBron. I believe I know what I'm going to get for AD. If that's Kuzma, that's the unknown. And what we're trying to now, if you're going to give us what he gave us the other night, Skip, well, we're good. <laughs> we're going to be sitting... We're going to be sitting pretty, but I don't, I don't know if I can count on that, Skip, on a nightly basis. But I like what I saw from the guys that did play. Mm. Caruso is going to play a lot of minutes, Skip. You can't not play. LeBron is not going to be playing 40 minutes, especially in the first round. Mm. So he's probably going to get his customary, what, somewhere between 33, 36 minutes, and then the rest of those minutes are going to have to go. Uh, and he does play, Caruso does play a lot with LeBron mm. and handles the ball. So he's going to play a lot. But I love what I saw from Jr. I love what I saw from Deion Waiters. Because what you need with a guy with Waiters, he's a guy that can create his own shot. He can shoot off the, he can shoot off the dribble, mm-hmm. but he can put the ball on the floor and get to the hoop. Jr. was making shots. That's Jr. Skip, you know you're going to get some of that with Jr. You're going to get, you're going to get some falling out of bounds threes. You're going to get some, and then you're going to be like, damn, Jr. What, what the hell are you doing? But I like what I saw. I like what I saw. But I'm a little surprised LeBron didn't get at least say a quarter. Of mm. work in, but I ain't worried. Mm. But you, you, I tell you what, you, you go over there, man. I sure wish you took uh, tonight off on mm. Thursday. That's what you gonna be saying. Really? Yeah, I wish you took tonight off because mm. he gonna get that work to Kawhi. Right now, all I'm concerned about <laughs> is what happened yesterday or did not happen yesterday because I must tell you, I was shocked. <laughs> LeBron James played zero minutes yesterday. This after he played three quarters on Saturday against Orlando, mm-hmm. and I told you I was in awe of it because he's played the third most minutes in the NBA history, mm-hmm. and I thought it was a little bit dangerous, but I was I was applauding it. I was lauding it because it looked like LeBron is all in. He is just hell-bent to go take this championship mm-hmm. by the throat right. and do what he needs to do in the bubble to be at, at supreme max physical peak going into Thursday night as the seeding game starts. Right. So I, I was stunned that you, uh, you even predicted yesterday, or you just said your gut feeling was, you, you thought he might play all the whole game. Yeah. And I was, I tuned in. It was noon our time out here on the West Coast. Mm-hmm. And I thought, this is going to be interesting. Let's see what LeBron's right. got today. Right. And I'm waiting. Yeah. And I'm like, he's sitting. Yep. But – Beside him on the bench was his co-MVP candidate, A.D., who did get poked in the eye Mm -hmm. on Saturday. So I got that. But it led me to wonder, is it possible that LeBron opted out yesterday because he did not want to play without his co-MVP candidate and make expose himself to looking bad? Oh, Oh, wait a second. What about what happened last year? What what happened with no AD last year? Every time LeBron played, it looked pretty shaky. He went 28 and 27 by himself. But Skip, he did, but here's the thing, though, Skip. He had a bunch of young guys that didn't understand. A talented bunch of young guys. I mean, okay, okay, they, B.I. They, and Lonzo and yeah. Kuz. But, Skip, B.I. needed to be in a situation where he can dominate the ball. And he was never going to be in that role in L.A. And if you notice, since Zion has gotten into the game, has come back, B.I. stats have dipped. And that's what. And so he was never going to be the ball dominant player that he needed to be to showcase what he can do. But now that we, I ain't worried about LeBron. LeBron's like, hold on, you do realize I got nine trips to the final mm. without AD. 
I got three, four, I got three chips without AD. Mm. I got four MVPs without AD. I'm good. Now, I love having my side. I love having my, we, cause we ride we together. Mm. We ain't no bucket seats. We got a bench seat. You know mm -hmm. the old bench seat cars. Mm -hmm. That's how we roll. Mm. We ain't separate. We equal. Mm. Yet, Did, was it possible that yesterday LeBron decided, because everything is premeditated on his part, I don't want to unmake my MVP case that I made so strongly down the it's, stretch? It's already of, over. Well, is it over? Yes. They say they, they already had to have the voting in. Mm. Well, does he want to make himself look bad without AD? Does he want to send a bad message? These games are on TV. Yeah. Am I right? I, and he, I was, he was so committed. He like, I'm going to make sure I'm not going to play. He didn't even have shoes. Mm. He was barefooted. Was he? Yeah. Mm. Well, uh, it just gives me cause to pause because I wonder about if he's thinking about, I, I want to keep our feel-good momentum going, and I don't want to go out there with, with two guys. Again, you just brought up two guys that I don't know that LeBron completely trusts. In Deion Waiters and especially J.R. Smith, he trust he trust he, tru he, tru he <laughs> I don't think he trusts Jr. He knows, Skip. He knows what he knows. Jr. can make take big shots. He's done it. He's seen Jr. do these. Uh, Deion Waiters show. I mean, Skip. Here's the thing. Now, Danny Green played about 18 minutes, and I don't want to read too much into that. But I believe Deion Waiters and Jr. They're going to be getting some minutes from Danny Green because basically it's the hot hand. If you hot, you play. If you not, you sit. It's as mm. simple as that, Skip. Okay. Was not Jr. involved in the lowest moment, you could argue, of LeBron's career? Yes. Again, I think he had the ball in his hands. He should have pulled up and taken the shot. He got yes. the switch with Steph on it. <laughs> it was his shot to take, but he didn't take it. He passed it to George Hill, who went to the free throw line and predictably missed the second free throw. Right. And maybe predictably, Jr. lost his mind yeah. for a moment and lost track and lost right. lost his his senses. The hit he got in his eye. Well, maybe I I don't know what happened, but, but but again, he dribbled out the clock. Do you believe had LeBron James not wanted Jr. Smith on this roster? Do you believe Jr. Smith is on this team? Now you're dealing with the most for, outside of Jesus Christ, the most forgiving man that we've ever seen. Mm. Well, it's funny because he's had his issues with Jr. and he knows the good and he definitely knows yes. the bad. But was it because they were so desperate at that point that they just needed to add? Remember, they lost Avery because yeah. Avery opted out right. for all kinds of family but, and Black Lives remember, Matter issues. But remember, Skip, they had already signed Deion Waiters. Mm -hmm. So theoretically, did they really need Jr.? Well, yeah, you could argue. They needed another body. So LeBron said, you know what? We won a lot together, Skip. I mean, Jr. has been there for for, mm -hmm. for 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 three of these things now. They won one and they lost two, okay. but Jr. has been there. Okay. The last time I saw Jr. on any kind of video happened to be a TMZ video on the <laughs> night of May the thirty first here in Los Angeles, and it was the night of the first big protest, a yeah. Saturday night, and somehow Jr. had parked like one block away down the street, yeah, on the side and, street, and some little guy was. I it looked like he was going to vandalize Jr.'s. Was it a car? It yeah. looked like a truck, more mm -hmm. like. But Jr. went Mike Tyson on him, yeah, right? Yeah, right out yeah. in the middle of the street, just went Mike Tyson. Yeah. We're just beating the hell out of him, yeah. right? And we got to see it on TMZ <laughs> video. Is that the guy you trust? Because I know Jr. enough to know I like him, but but he can. He's got one sort of loose screw up right. there, and it, it affects him on and off the floor occasionally, where he just sort of loses track. Well, I guess the products that you could normally get in a normal situation, you won't be able to get. Hmm. Yeah, so you can't get that stuff in the bubble. Really? I mean, what, I mean, can you? I mean, you got the man down in the bubble that can get can get you that. And speaking of those products, uh, do you remember <laughs> the, the last big story involving Dion Waiters happened on a team plane yeah. in which there was a the THC edible yeah. that, that he sampled on the yeah. team plane coming yeah. home or yeah. coming back on a trip. He was right. in Miami, obviously. Yeah. And he had a panic attack yeah. over that. Do you remember this? I do remember it. Do you realize he got suspended, I believe, three different times just during this season, during this regular season by Pat Riley? He, he, he changed. He changed? Yeah, he changed. So, so I he, remember the text. Give you a know, okay, he was sick. Uh, he wasn't able to come to practice. Mm -hmm. And then he uh, takes a picture of himself on a yacht celebrating his birthday. Do you remember that? <laughs> okay. He was celebrating his birthday. And Pat Riley said, not on my watch. <laughs> you are suspended. So he, he got changed. 
Huh? He Same changed. Man. He just suddenly flipped the switch, mm -hmm. joined a LeBron mm -hmm. James who wants to put it on a time he played briefly with when LeBron went back to Cleveland. Right. And reportedly, LeBron was often aggravated, was the word reported. He was aggravated with Deion Waiters because of his bad habits and his ball hogging on offense. Right. And his lack of defense, something that JR often suffers himself. Right. I think both are capable of playing defense when they decide. But when they have not decided to play defense, you have liability. You do. But I think the thing is that I don't know how much Deion Waiters is going to be playing alongside LeBron, but you need somebody that can create their own shot mm. when LeBron is off the court. Mm. Remember, that's where they ran into the problems. If you look at LeBron's history with teams, is that nobody really could create other than Kyrie and D. Wade. So everybody else was dependent. So when LeBron went to the bench, and mm -hmm. Kyrie is really not, Kyrie's really a two. Kyrie can create his own shot, but he's really not the guy that's facilitating for someone else buy that. In, the trip, in, in the typical point guard, mm -hmm. in, in the point guard form. Yep. So that's what happens with LeBron is that when he went to the bench, there was no one else that could create their own shot. LeBron needed to get the ball to them. And so now we have a guy in Deion Waiters that can create his own shot. Mm. So I don't, like I said, I don't know how much they'll play together, but if LeBron goes to the bench, Deion Waiters can get buckets. He mm. can get his own shot. So it's going to be interesting to see. Okay, so I warn you that now you have three X factors in your rotation because I think they're all in the rotation. I know Kuzma's in the rotation, and you just you brought it up. I never know what I'm going to get from Kyle Kuzma. You can get gangbusters. Yeah. You, you can get difference makers. You don't know who for the Clippers is going to lead the bubble next either. Well, you okay. need to worry about right. that. Okay. Don't but, worry about us. We I got think right now we're talking about your team. I'm going to talk about my team in just a moment. But the point is – that you've got Deion Waiters. Do you trust him, LeBron? Do you trust J.R. Smith in the biggest game at the biggest yeah. moment against the Clippers, let's say, dare I say, in the do you remember, conference Do finals? you remember game seven when all of a sudden it started to slip away, the Warriors had opened up a double-digit lead, he made and it was JR, J.R. that came back and gave a boom, 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 boom. Do you know how many shows I've done during NBA Finals featuring LeBron's teams in which the story of the day that we talked about for two, two and a half hours on television was, where is JR? Yeah. What, whatever happened to JR? Right. Would, would somebody put out an APB for JR's jumper? <laughs> yeah. Do you remember this? Oh, yes. Like, okay, that's what you're up against. So you got X Factor Kuzma, X Factor Dion, X Factor JR, all in big games. You could get huge out of all three. I, yes. I, I love yes. Dion's yes. game. I yes. love it. Yes. And he is fearless. All three are fearless shooters. Mm -hmm. And all three are capable of going shockingly cold and not being there when you need them the most. That is absolutely correct. Okay. But that's, those are risk. Now, back to my to team, and nobody's been watching my team probably except me, but Ooh. my team now is the Clippers. They look a mess. And, and they do look a mess <laughs> off the court, but <laughs> on the court, because they've had so many defections from the bubble, uh, this guy has been playing like 20, 25 minutes a, a day or night whenever they play. And? And, and you, you wouldn't, I don't know who he is, but he looks like he used to be Joakim Noah. I, I don't know. Do you remember Joakim Noah? Do you, do you remember that guy? It's been a year since he played basketball. But this guy looks like a much better Joakim Noah. This guy looks like he spent the last year in the weight room because he's got shoulders and he's got biceps and he's got clout in, in the lane that I've never seen before. And I think it's Joakim Noah. I think he is flexing new muscles for the Clippers. And did you see what he did on Saturday? He had five blocks and he's still as good a passing big man as there has ever been in this league. We he own can him. really distribute. We own him. You, you own we him? We own him. Yeah, just wait. I think he's starting to own this league own for the him. Clippers. You remember what I he, think he's played his way right into the rotation <laughs> for the Los Angeles Clippers. You remember he Clippers. all, the, he all that, all that, the LeBron James don't mean nothing, and we just sweep him right up out the playoffs really? every year. Okay. And every year we get him up out of there. When he was Chicago, you remember Skip? Do I? Yeah. yeah. Got him right up out of there. Yeah, but that was your man Thibodeau, right? No, yeah, oh, so that nice. yeah, it's Tim's fault. So now it's Tim's fault. Tim's fault yeah. That Joe Kim no. So whose fault was it when he mm -hmm. went to New York? All I know is he is playing huge for the Clippers. Oh, did you see Jim Bell yesterday? Mm -hmm. So watch out, get it out. Watch out, watch, yeah, watch, he's, watch. He's capable. Yeah, 
I think the Lakers are going to have their hands full with Joaquin playing 20 minutes of impactful basketball. Skip, you got to realize high we, impact. Skip, y'all got we got two, we got two, we got three big men. Mm. We got AD, we got Dwight, and we got JaVale. Dwight's knee is barking. He didn't play yesterday either. I don't know. We good. Mm. We good. <laughs> All right. Interesting. <laughs> Thursday night, both of your Zubas teams looking in like this here, like. squared off. I am so looking forward to this. Oh, good stuff. Uh, Skip, we actually do have to talk about a different team of yours mm. and a quarterback specifically because just last night it was announced that Dak Prescott came in at 46 on the NFL's top 100 players list voted on by the players themselves. <clears throat> it's notable that Dak failed to even crack the list at all the previous two seasons after coming in at 14th three seasons ago. So, Shannon, after Dak missed the list the last two years, how do you explain Dak being ranked 46th? I think he's earned the respect of his players. Um, I, I think they, they view him now as a top player, Skip. And I agree with them. I think he should be on the list. Um, I think he should be higher than some of the guys, uh, uh, the Tanny Hills and the Cousins. He was higher than those guys. I'm disappointed walking to him that wasn't on the list. I think that so was, far. Ain't maybe, no so maybe far. He, well, they maybe say, he will be. They said well, they only had five. They said the Eagles had five players on the list. They've already named all their five. Is that true? That, it's over? Well, that's what that, I was reading the, the, uh, the Philly thing, uh, uh, a thing out of Philly yesterday, and it said they were supposed to have five guys. And so, so Carson Wentz did not make the top 100 NFL players as voted upon by the NFL players. That's, 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 that's what it looks like to me. But, Skip, when you, when you, I think the thing is when you look at Dak, he was fifth in QBR. He was, what, second in passing yards. He was fourth in touchdowns. Uh, it's hard to say that he's not a top player. Mm-hmm. I think the thing is, Skip, is that once he developed a consistency, because when you look at what he has offensively, I believe had he gotten this team into the playoffs, Dak's going to be in the 30s. He might be in the 20s. You cannot have Zeke, a top five back. You can't have Amar. You can't have <clears throat> Gallup and miss the playoffs with that offensive line. Even if your defense isn't that good, Skip, you've got to be able to get into shootouts and win shootouts. And for, for whatever reason, Dak was unable to do that. And so I think they hold that against him, Skip. But I believe that once, because as you mentioned, his first year, obviously coming in as a, a rookie, you're not going to be ranked. But they thought so much of him the next year that he was 14. No, his, that, that was off his rookie yes. year. Yes. Yes. So that go, yeah. goes to show you yeah. what they thought of him. Mm-hmm. And I believe, yeah. Skip, had he made the playoff, Skip, there's no question in my mind with the stats that he put up. Dak's going to be in the 20s or the 30s, mm. but uh, he deserves to be on the list. Um, I believe Dak is a better quarterback right now as we sit here than he was when he was ranked 14 mm. because, Skip, the offense flowed through Zeke then. They asked Z- uh, Dak to do a lot more now than they did then, mm. and I believe he's doing a great job of that. He just needs to develop the consistency, and you cannot, with that offensive talent, lo- not make the playoffs. That's Mm. unacceptable, Mm. and that goes directly at the feet of the quarterback. So, for the record, uh, I want to remind our viewers, the man who just spoke, seven times in the last 13 Cowboy games last year, the man who just spoke glowingly of Dak Prescott gave him Fs. Yeah. He gave him seven Fs in 13 games. Oh, now that I look at it, Skip, Cousin Mike should be higher. Really, Cousin should be higher than Dak. He beat him. You told me the guy head-to-head. Josh Allen beat him Mm head-to-head. That's what you told me. You know what? Kirk Cousins did not beat Dak head to head because in those last 13 games, the best game he played by far was against Minnesota on a, I believe, Sunday night. night. And again, at the end of the game, after he drove them all down, all the way down to second and two at the 11, mm-hmm. after completing an eight-yard pass to Amari, and Amari was on fire, all obviously at home that night. Yeah. Uh, they took the ball out of Dak's hands and went Zeke, 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 game over because he was about to go win the game against the Vikings. So I thought that was the best game he played over the last 13. He started out with three very strong games against what you called garbage teams, yeah. and I'll give you that. Yeah. And then after that, Pro Football Focus ranked him in the last 13 games 15th in the league, which is about in the middle of the pack. Right. Okay, so here's my gut feeling and my reaction to all of the above. I sat here exactly one year ago when this list was finished right. being unveiled mm-hmm. on NFL Network, yeah. and I went out of my mind crazy nuts. And I said, there is no way that Dakota, Rain Dakota Prescott, <laughs> Rain, R-E-I-G-N, Rain Dakota Prescott, 
does not belong in the top 100 players in this league. And what was he coming off the year before? They were voting on a guy who did get Amari at midseason the year before and took off. And in the last 10 games of that year, I'm going back two years ago Mm -hmm. to the 2018 season, over the last 10 games of that year, he led the league in completions. I can make a case that after he got Amari, he was the best quarterback in pro football down the stretch and into the playoffs. In the first playoff game at home, he outplayed Russell Wilson. I dare you to show me he didn't outplay Russell Wilson. Mm-hmm. He beat him with his arm and then in the end with his legs. And they won the game 24-22 to and came here to Los Angeles where Dak outplayed Jared Goff. Just be, It was QBR was 74-54, to Dak over Jared Goff. He played well enough to win a game that the defense spat up, just choked it up (laughs) because they couldn't stop either Gurley or your little man from Denver, little C.J. Anderson. (laughs) They couldn't stop either one of them, and they ran wild over, around, and through them that night. And uh, and still, Dak (laughs) just kept fighting his guts out and kept them in that game, and they barely lost it by one score, 30-22. to And off that run, Dak gets voted out of the top 100, and I went out of my mind because you know how I feel about quarterbacks. If if you know the game and you appreciate the impact of that position, it's the most important. It's 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 not. It's, I can't go more important than pitcher in baseball, but it's right up there with pitcher in baseball. Right. So the point is, you can't tell me that every starting quarterback shouldn't be in the top 100 somewhere because of the <laughs> just the virtue of the position they play. <laughs> so my point is. How can you go from Dak ranks 14th off his rookie year? What did I tell you? I said, I thought he had the greatest rookie Mm -hmm. season I've ever seen a rookie play because he gets thrown into the fire in place of Tony Romo, who was beloved in Cowboy Nation. And here they go, and they go 13-3. and Right. And he threw for 305 yards and three touchdowns against Aaron Rodgers and company, and it took two intergalactic field goals to beat him from 56 (laughs) yards and 51 yards for them to pull that out of the fire at Jerry World in the playoff game. So off that, they say, he's the 14th best player in the league. And I'm like, thank you. I agree. And then he goes two straight years voted out of the top 100. Out. How do you do that? It's impossible. So how do you go from 2018 being maybe the best quarterback in football the last 10 games, you go from out of the top 100 to last year, you go 8-8 and and you don't make the Pro Bowl, and the Hall of Famer Shannon Sharp gives you Fs for seven of your last 13 games, but you suddenly, mysteriously, inexplicably vault all the way from out of the top 100 to 46. You, You vault up. 54 places. I don't even know how far out of the top 100 he was. He might have been 150th. Yeah, yeah. I they they, they, right? they uh, will right? change it to the top okay. 150. Yeah, Get top 150. There. Yeah, so so he vaults all the way up to 46th. And when this hit my screen last night, I had it on, I, I just fell out of my chair. I said, how do you do that? How do you explain that he went all the way up to 46 off a year in which he did not play great down the stretch mm-hmm. last year and he did not go to the Pro Bowl? And they did not go to the playoffs. So so how do you justify it? I don't know. I don't know what they're thinking, but I got a theory. I believe that Dak Prescott turned into last year a sympathetic figure <laughs> among players. Among players in the league, he became the number one sympathetic figure in all of pro football because Jerry done him wrong. I don't think Jerry did him that wrong. I think Dak did it to himself. But most players... Maybe every player I heard talk publicly about this. What did we keep hearing? Pay the man. Yeah, exactly. Pay the man. Right. Pay the man. Pay him what? Pay him Mahomes money? Well, there's well, this thing called a cap. So how realistic are you to say, pay the man what he's asking for? Really? Pay him $45 well, million? Well, that, well and, and the play, look, I don't believe it's because of sympathy. I think that when you look at it, Skip, he was fifth in QBR. He was second in pass yards. He was fourth in touchdowns. That's worth something because at the end of the day, it's still – the NFL is still based on stats, and 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 if you can accumulate those, it's hard for me to see a scenario where the top, you know, five, six running backs are not going to make this list. So you look at Dak's numbers; his number says, "Yeah, he should be on this list." Forty, almost five thousand yards. 
yeah, he should be on this list, fifth in QBR. You love QBR. So his QBR said he was the fifth best quarterback in all of football. Skip. Okay, so how was he not on the list a year ago? You, you were totally good with the list a year ago. Yeah. You said he doesn't belong on the yeah. list. Yeah. Well, how did he not? He played the last 10 games at the hot, the top of his position. He played this year, Skip. Hold on. You said Zeke wasn't the same guy. Mm -hmm. That's what you said. Yeah. Zeke led the league in rushing. So I guess they looked at it like, well, man, Zeke doing all this thing. Duke, Zeke, this is because of Zeke. You got them little bit of yards that you got because Zeke's running the ball and you play action. Well, this year they held Zeke down. That's what you tell me. And he had to do it all on his own because mm -hmm. you said he never had Amari on the road. Mm -hmm. So now he's doing that with one hand tied behind his back. He doesn't have the running game he once had, and his number one receiver can't get open on the road. Okay. So they factored that in. Okay. I've told you all along, I still have Dak Prescott in, in the top ten of quarterbacks. There are 32 starters, so top ten. I've got him ninth. Okay. Go that high. You wouldn't go that high. Okay. But I would, and I'm trying to be objective about it. But if he's the ninth best quarterback, then clearly – He's in the top 100 players because he's probably in the top 20 players if you're the ninth best quarterback by virtue of the power of the position. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> you and I look. I get it. And and when the players, when the players voted carefully, and it hurts more. That's why I you agree. Hear, that's why you hear them speak out when they get they, they, they 70 true. or 80 because this is the player. These are what other players that play against you. Yeah. This is what they think of you. I agree. So, it's given. so for me, I, I was like, okay. I, I mean, I see some guys over here. There's no way you can tell me that Kirk Cousins, Ryan Tannehill, Josh Allen, and Kyler Murray are better than walking to him. You just can't convince me of that. But the players believe that, they, that he is, that okay. they are. All right. So let's do Kyler Murray. Again, I fell off my chair when I saw he ranked only 90th. He did make the top 100, right. but he's 90th. So you're telling me right now. Kyler Murray is only the 90th most valuable player in pro football. Do you know what would happen? Let's do – last night they revealed all the way down to 40, okay? okay. So in the, the 50 down to 41, you've got – 50th was Darius Leonard, then Mark Ingram, then, then Clowney was number 40, right. okay? I, I'll give you any one of those three guys, including Clowney, who's still on the open right. market. And if you, you right now went to Jacksonville and you said, Jacksonville, you can have Kyler Murray or Clowney. Kyler Murray or Mark Ingram, Kyler Murray or Darius Leonard, who's a fabulous young stud mm -hmm. player. Who would Jacksonville take? Would they take Kyler Murray or any of those they three? They like Gardner Minshew. They do not like Gardner <laughs> Minshew. They, they know they are in trouble at that position. They would take Kyler Murray in a heartbeat. Yeah. They would say, give me Kyler Murray because Kyler Murray, is, you want to talk but, about a little stud. But, but, Skip, but Skip, what players don't do is what you do. They just look at a player and they say, he balling out. They don't look at the position and say, man, he plays a more important position in that one. Or he plays a more important yep. position in this one. That's not how players evaluate it. That's what evaluators do. But a player, I'm just looking at the guy, can the guy ball? Okay. So you're just saying, no matter what position he plays, can he ball better than the quarterback can ball? Do you think that Clowney can ball better than Kyler Murray? I do not think no. I do not think Clowney had a better season last year than Kyler Murray. Thank so you. So that's what you're asking. Not because Kyler plays quarterback, because I just think Jadavian Clowney had a down season. And that's what and, and, and sometimes skip the guys get on there and it's just like the Pro Bowl. Guys been on there, they just okay, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, him. Yeah, him. Yeah. Or he has a, a good game, but he has a game on national television where he flashes. Well, that's all you How need. many times were you asked to vote for Pro Bowl teams mm -hmm. and you're looking at an offensive line position and you're just not you, sure? Yeah, you just didn't watch right, them. Right. You, you were too busy trying to get ready for because, your game. Because the offensive lineman, he can't get stats. Okay, no. you look at, okay, the running back. Okay, look at the quarterback. How many sacks did they get? Uh, so that, and, and so once, that's why linemen, Skip, they get 9, 10, 12, 13 Pro Bowl. Mm -hmm. Because once the guy gets in there, you know him by That's the only guy you know. So Zach Martin and Tyron Smith and, and the big kid out of uh, uh, Indianapolis, mm -hmm. they're going to go to a bunch mm -hmm. of Pro Bowls. And once they get one or two, then it's <laughs> just like you're, you're godfathered in. It, it, yeah. but because you, they can't get stats. Mm -hmm. yeah, but it's not like they're catching passes no. or rushing for yards or anything like that. But mm. I don't know. Somebody's going to go have to a, a answer me why Walker Tua ain't on here. Mm. Download the all-new Fox Sports app now. 